In the following presentation, you'll learn about the annual grants to organizations and schools from the Arizona Commission on the Arts. My name is Alex Nelson. I'm the Director of Arts Learning here at the Arts Commission. My name is Jessica Ryko. I'm the Artist Services Coordinator. And my name is Kristen Pierce. I'm the Organizational Services Coordinator. We'll be presenting to you today this information and our contact information will be available at the end. First, we're going to tell you a little bit about the Arts Commission. At the Arizona Commission on the Arts, we imagine an Arizona where everyone can participate in and experience the arts. The Arts Commission is one of 56 government state arts agencies, and we are funded by the State of Arizona and the National Endowment for the Arts. The Arts Commission is a grant maker, but also a convener and a resource. We provide professional development workshops across the state, and our staff is a link to local and national resources. The agency is governed by a 15-member governor-appointed commission, and our staff includes practicing artists, skilled administrators, and education specialists. A quick note about building public value. The Arts Commission uh, produces a publication called Building Public Value that is available to download on our website and provides lots of tools and uh, tips for promoting the value of your work. Before we talk about annual grants, we wanted to take a moment to tell you about our Fast Track Grants program. These two grants have two deadlines each year. The next deadline will take place in August. Professional Development Grants provide support for artists, arts administrators, and arts educators to attend professional development and skill building activities. The Chamber and Tourism Membership Grants assist Arizona nonprofit arts and culture organizations to purchase a membership in the Business Bureau, the Chamber of Commerce, the tourism industry, and their community. It's your choice to select which um, chamber you would like to join, and the grant will fund up to one or two years of mem membership, depending on the cost. The annual grants that we're talking to you about today are community investment grants, festival grants, arts learning grants, and honoring our service members grants. The grant-making objectives that drove the changes to our grant programs were to put Arizona citizens first, to incentivize best practices and innovative strategies, and encourage broad participation and engagement, and to ensure that the state's investment in arts and culture reflects Arizona's diverse population, geography, and evolving demographics. A quick note about eligibility. As you can see from this chart, your organization might be eligible to apply in more than one grant category, but each organization is only able to select one grant application which they would like to submit in any given fiscal year. So if you are a nonprofit arts organization, for example, you are eligible to apply for a community investment grant and a festival grant. But based on your mission and your programming, you'll need to select the one grant category that's the best fit for you. Hi, this is Jessica Ryko, and I am going to begin our annual grants overview by discussing festival grants. At the Arizona Commission on the Arts, we believe that festivals are an entry point to the arts. The purpose of our festival grants is to assist organizations in their effort to provide quality arts programming and assist with the cost of connecting artists with their communities. Festival grant awards are a flat grant of $2,000 with a one-to-one -one match fund required. Applicants must demonstrate one successful year of arts-related programming, a minimum budget of $4,000 in order to create the $2,000 match, and at least $2,000 in eligible artistic fees. To learn more about our eligible artistic fees, please see the guidelines. The review criteria for festival grants are the following. Community investment, quality programming and service, fiscal ingenuity, and stewardship of public funds. Hi, this is Kristen Pierce, and I'm going to talk about the next two grant programs. The first one is honoring our service member grants. This is a project grant program, and it is also a partnership meant to be between a nonprofit health and human service organization, colleges, universities, libraries, community centers, units of government, and an artist or an 
arts organization. The purpose of this grant is to assist organizations in their efforts to provide participatory arts and culture experiences for active duty service members, reservists, veterans, and their families. The key word here is participatory. We're not just looking for a proposal that features ticket or admission subsidies or subsidy for travel to and from events. We're really looking for a proposal that has a hands-on activity that engages its chosen demographics. Proposals can focus on any arts discipline or arts therapy, align with your existing arts programming, involve participants of any age, and take place in a variety of settings and formats, including on military bases. Grant awards range from $750 up to $7,500. A one-to-one -one matching fund is required, and you must have a minimum project budget of $1,500. And like I said, grant funds are not intended for free ticket programs and transportation to and from events. These things can be a component of your proposal, but are not the focus of the proposal itself. The review criteria for this program is community investment, quality programming or service, and stewardship of public funds. For community investment, we're asking you to define who your chosen demographic is for this project. Quality of programming and service is exactly what you plan to do. And stewardship of public funds, how well your organization is prepared to manage a public grant. Now we'll talk about our community investment grant program. This is our renovated general operating support program. The purpose is to assist arts organizations with general administrative and artistic expenses, providing funding for general operating expenses as well as leverage for other public and private funding. The bottom line here is that the funds awarded are still unrestricted dollars. Awards are tiered by organizational adjusted annual income and calculated based on panel ranking. A one-to-one -one match of award funds is required and all eligible applications will undergo panel review. This is an overview of the Community Investment Grant Program. On the left side, you will see levels of entry into the program, levels one through six. To find out what level your organization will enter in, you need to know your organization's adjusted annual income from your previously completed fiscal year statement. This can be found on your Cultural Data Project Funder Report, line 36. It is your total unrestricted revenue, less in kind. Once you find this number, you can see an award spread for the level of your entry. And the right column lists some additional requirements for your organization's application. If you're a small organization or you don't have your nonprofit status yet, you're probably going to apply in level one where you can apply with a fiscal sponsor. Jumping to level four, this is where your organization needs to have a full-time manager on staff. And then jumping to level six, this is where you also need to have an education manager and submit your education plan. A word about the cultural data project. All applicants to the community investment grant program are required to submit their financial data through the cultural data project portal and receive a review complete status. Once you've received review complete status, you will upload your funder report as part of your application on the GoIgor system. Other points about the cultural data project it is a powerful web-based data collection tool that has over 70 trend reports and comparison reports that you can use with your organization, your board, and with other funders. And it gives arts and culture organizations the ability to organize information for multiple funding partnerships. Currently, there are 22 organizations in Arizona that accept the Cultural Data Project Funder Report as the preferred method of financial reporting. Additional requirements for the Community Investment Grant Program Everyone is required to submit a full application for this cycle. An alternate year application cycle may be implemented again starting in fiscal year 15. And just as I mentioned before, all eligible applications will undergo panel review. One other thing we're requesting, if you have not received funding from the Arts Commission for more than two years or you've never applied before, is that we ask that you send, you send me a notice of intent to apply. My contact information is on the website and in the guides, and we just ask that you follow the instructions and send me an email by February 22nd. This is Alex Nelson again. The last program in our annual grants is our Arts Learning Grants. These grants deliver funding to quality arts programming which supports lifelong learning in, through, and about the arts and quality student-centered programming that supports Arizona's academic standards in the arts. Projects that are eligible in this category 
can be for a wide range of types of participants from K through 12 students to adults and everything in between. And a wide variety of types of applicants are eligible in this program. Schools, school districts, community service and social service organizations, health and human service centers, parks and recreation departments, after school programs and more are all eligible to apply for arts learning grants. The primary uh, component of the award in this program is matching funds for artist, company, or consultant fees. Non-matching honorariums can also be requested as a part of the award. Travel per diem for the artist or company if they're traveling more than 70 miles round trip to reach the project site. Supplies up to $200 to help offset the cost of consumable supplies and new this year, participant travel, also up to $200 to help offset the cost of uh, travel fees for field trip type activities that enhance and support the overall learning objectives of the project. Also new this year is the addition of a second deadline for arts learning grants. The March 21st deadline remains open for arts learning grants and applying in March will allow your project to take place anytime throughout the fiscal year, July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2014. Cycle B for arts learning grants has a deadline in October and will fund projects taking place in the second half of the fiscal year, January through June, 2014. We implemented this new deadline because we received a lot of feedback from teachers and teaching artists working in schools about the need to plan for, apply for, and execute a project in the same school year. We encourage you to consider applying in October if that would be helpful for you. The review criteria for arts learning grants are quality programming or service, participant learning, and stewardship of public funds. We also wanted to mention the Teaching Artist roster. This is an online searchable database maintained by the Arts Commission of highly qualified teaching artists that can deliver arts learning projects in schools and communities. The online database is juried so you know that the artists you would be engaging with are of high quality. You are not required to use an artist on the roster in an arts learning grant application, but if you are looking for an artist to engage, we encourage you to search the roster. Hi, this is Jessica Ryko again. Now that we've gone through our annual grants, I'm going to take a brief moment to go over our Go Igor system. Go Igor is our updated online application system for all of our annual grants. It is now available for you to start your online applications. With GoIgor, we simply ask that all organizations create a new user profile. Some of the benefits of our new GoIgor system is that it's user-friendly and intuitive. You can save your work as you go. It, inclu it includes substantial timeout warnings. Each organization can create multiple unique logins for individuals involved in the grant writing process. Meaning, if you're an organization who has multiple people inputting information into your application, each member of your organization can create their own unique username and password. It provides easier access to your organization's profile and information, and it's a completely online process from applications to panel review. If you need assistance with this, Michael Soto and Ginny Berryhill, our two staff members working on Go Igor, would be happy to assist you. As you may know, all of our grants are reviewed by panels. All of our annual grants are on a 100 point scale and they're peer reviewed. Our peer review panels consist of a diverse group of administrators, artists, community members, and many others from across the state. If you are interested in serving as a volunteer pa panelist, please contact us. This is Alex Nelson again. Before we conclude our presentation, we'd like to tell you about a new grant from the Arts Commission, the Arts Education Partnerships Initiative. This initiative will fund school-based capacity building programs that strengthen teaching and learning in arts education and or arts integration 
through school community partnerships. Eligible applicants to this program are Arizona D-Label schools partnering with a nonprofit arts organization or governmental entity. Either partner may serve as the primary applicant and additional partners of any type may be included in the proposal. Please note that applying to the Arts Education Partnerships Initiative does not prohibit you from applying to any of our other annual grant programs. The most important thing to know about this initiative is that proposals should address school reform or capacity building efforts at the school and that the Arts Commission will not prescribe a model but looks to accept proposals that are innovative and tailored to the needs of the partners. The initiative will fund up to three proposals with potential grants ranging from ten to fifteen thousand dollars. The application process for this initiative will be different from the application process for the annual grants. This initiative will use a call for proposals model and letters of interest from the uh, partners will be accepted in April. Those letters of interest will be reviewed by the Arts Commission and the Arizona Department of Education. Promising partnerships will then be invited to apply and will need to submit a short narrative application with a deadline in June. We'd also like to note that through a partnership with the Arizona Department of Education, funded applicants will be required to participate in an evaluation process and that the Department of Education will provide resources for that process. Guidelines for this program are available on the website and provide more information and address frequently asked questions. And as always, please contact Arts Commission staff with questions. That concludes our presentation. The guidelines for each of the grant programs discussed today can be downloaded from the website. Staff contact information can also be found on the website and we encourage you to call or email with any questions you may have. Thank you.